In 2022, we did a lot of what I would call painting within limitations. And the majority of my videos were created to showcase certain paint lines, techniques, or tutorials. It's actually quite rare that I get to use all of my different paints and techniques on a single figure. So when Dave from Mini Wargaming sent me a few of his new miniatures to paint, I thought it would be fun to take my favorite of the three minis and showcase how I would paint it using all of my skills and techniques that I've learned over the previous year. To paint this evil spaceman to look like an evil space crab. I started off with a matte black prime through my airbrush as I usually do, but then instead of a grey midtone, I decided to use my very favorite magenta ink, Dalarani Fluorescent Pink, to provide a rich red midtone to the figure. After this, I finished up our Zenithal by spraying some white primer directly from above. After this, I deviated from my typical underpainting technique. Click here for more on my various underpainting techniques by using the contrast paint Black Legion to add some really harsh, thick lines between the panels of the armor. Black Legion has become my go-to panel lining paint as it's extremely matte, pigmented, and dark, so I thought it might be interesting to apply this technique before I add color to the figure instead of after, as I might usually do. I then moved on to highlights. And instead of using a dry brush like I usually would, I tried out my friend Lila Mev's suggestion of using white artist acrylic for these sort of underpainted highlights instead of a regular white paint. So I used titanium white ink to highlight all of these areas that I thought would catch the light, and I also cleaned up any overspill of Black Legion while I was at it. I spent quite a long time on this until I essentially had a black and white rendering of the figure, and then I moved on to some airbrush glazing. I stole the color scheme for this figure from the excellent Halloween Moon Crab, which is a real crab apparently. And I was inspired to do this because the figure itself reminded me of a crab for some reason. And I thought that because my Space Marine army was based on sharks, it would be appropriate for my Chaos Marines to be based on crabs. And the first color I glazed on to get this crabby look is the same fluorescent magenta that I used for the undershading. But this time you can see how vibrant it is when applied over bright white undertones. I applied this color anywhere that I thought would eventually need orange or purple tones and then moved on to the next color. While I was working on this project, I thought it would be fun to see how the new contrast flats or single pigment contrast paints work through an airbrush. So I thinned down some Bad Moon Yellow with airbrush thinner and then glazed it over all of the parts of the models that I wanted to be off-white, orange, or red. I thought this worked pretty well, so I decided to try another contrast flat paint through my airbrush for the next glazing color. I did the same thing with Ball Red, thinning it down with some airbrush thinner and applied it pretty liberally over the entire model, just leaving a few parts to look like that creamy, soft, undershell color of a crab. And the main part of the color scheme that was missing at this point was the purple. And I was going to try out the new contrast flat purple color for the purples on this figure, but instead I accidentally used a different contrast paint, which I think worked out pretty well. This color, Luxion Purple, is one of my favorite contrast paints in the new 2.0 range, and after thinning it like I did the other colors, I applied this over the entire backside of the figure, letting the purple fade into the red, as well as applying bits of it to the arms like on the crab. Once applied, I felt like the main color missing here to make this crab look like a crab was more orange. So I thinned down yet another contrast paint in my airbrush, this time using another one of the contrast flats, Magma Droth Flame. I used this color as a thin glaze to help tint all of the reds and pinks into a more orange range to match our crab color scheme. And with all of our airbrushing complete, I thought we could use some more manual highlights on the figure. But before we do that, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about today's sponsor, Ravage Star Miniatures. And specifically, that this is your final opportunity to pre-order the Veil Touched before they all ship out within the next few months. Ravage Star is a brand new line of highly detailed, heroic 32mm scale figures for use in all of your favorite tabletop and role-playing games. And while these do look familiar and could be used as proxies, 
I really appreciate that they all come with their own unique names, lore, background, etc., as well as what looks like a new rule set which is in development. And these are not STL files like you might expect. These are actually physical, high quality PVC miniatures. And while I painted up a few of these in a previous video last year, those were just 3D printed prototypes. And this is the first time I was able to work with the actual PVC figures. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with the level of detail and crispness of the plastic. It's a lot firmer and less bendy than I imagined when I think of PVC plastic. So if you'd like to get a few of these for yourself, why not go and check out their crowdfunding page over on GameFound. And this campaign is just going to be active for a little while longer after this video goes live. The link is down in the description, so go and check it out right now before the campaign is gone forever. Go and check it out. I thought we could use some more manual highlights on the figure. So I busted out my Dana Howell non-copyrighted, off-white, all-purpose highlighting fluid that Army Painter mixed up for me and went to town on the highlights. Before highlighting, I always try to make sure to wipe off the excess on my brush first. And with mostly just using dots and edge highlighting, I started adding highlights to the figure starting at the center of the belly and then working outwards to mimic the soft underbelly of a crab. And I feel like this was starting to look pretty good, but I thought we were missing a lot of the purple we wanted to incorporate into the scheme. So I created about a 50-50 mix of golden so flat red violet and golden fluid matte medium. For more on golden paints, there's a video linked right here if you wanna know about those golden so flat paints. And I used this color to help reintegrate some of the purple color back into the crab marine's extremities. I then did another round of highlights with the off-white color. In the morning, I took another look at the figure with some fresh eyes and realized that overall, the highlights were both too obvious and in need of blending, but I also thought the colors were not quite as vibrant as I had intended, so I busted out a few more of my golden so flat colors, mixed together some vibrant orange and red tones, and did some manual blending of all of those colors together. And as I went, adding new vibrant fluorescent colors to the model, I discovered that this character was just missing a certain amount of contrast, so I used my Black Legion contrast paint to paint a few parts of the figure in matte black to help break up the areas of vibrant color. I continued blending orange into the figure, once again aiming for a gradient starting with the lightest colors in the center and moving slowly out through the spectrum towards violet at the figure's extremities. The addition of the fluorescent orange was really giving me that feeling of a deep sea creature that I wanted, and I thought I would take things just a step further by introducing small amounts of yellow towards the center of the figure as highlights on top of some of the orange parts. And although this paint job is really starting to deviate from the crab it was based on, I was really happy with how it was going, so I kept on blending colors together on the figure. Once again, adding back in more purple to the arms and extremities. And at a certain point, I also went back in with some Black Legion to do a little bit of panel lining where I thought it could be interesting around the face or helmet, bringing out even more of those wonderful sculpted details on this figure. I used some unthinned yellow to add glowing eyes to the details and face, and then I added way too much white on one of the arms in pursuit of a technique that didn't quite work, so I ended up repainting that arm in purple and adding in more normal highlights back onto it. So just ignore that step. Beyond this, I spent some more time smoothing out all of the gradients and re-highlighting things, aiming for a more impressionistic look rather than the smoothest possible blends, as I thought it suited the more cartoony look of this figure. At this point, I was pretty happy with the look of the front of the figure, but I thought the back of the figure could use a little bit more love. So based on the Halloween moon crab's yellow markings on its back, I decided to add in some more yellow light sourcing to the back of this figure. I started out by adding some thick primary yellow into the crevices of the backpack. The idea being it might be emitting a glow from within, and I did the same to this little grill thing on the back of the gun. To blend this together and give the effect of a light source, I mixed some magenta paint into the yellow to get a sort of 
orange and blended some of the areas around the yellow orange light source area. And then to really drive home the idea that this is a light source, I put some titanium white at the very center of the glowing parts and on some of the edges around the metallic trim to show that light is reflecting off of things and coming from within. And then used a thinned down ochre yellow to blend these really bright highlights down a bit in places where it was too bright. Finally, I used a bit of purple paint to darken some of the areas around the light source to create a greater level of contrast and really sell that effect. And with that, our figure is pretty much complete. I hope you enjoyed this video where I document just painting a figure that I think is fun using all of my various techniques and paints to do so. If you're interested in this figure, make sure to check out Dave's Ravage Star line of miniatures, which is available now for pre-order. Link is down in the description and you just have a few more days left to my knowledge to get in on this. Thank you as always to all of our wonderful patrons for supporting this channel and making these videos happen. And I will see you in the next video.